Thank you to Rocket Mortgage for sponsoring this video. Today I want to talk to you about an incredible show on the Rocket Learn YouTube channel called Home Lore. Home Lore is like a real life adventure where they explore America's most unique homes. I'm talking haunted castles, tropical tree houses, and maybe even a speakeasy run by gangsters. What I love about Home Lore is the deep dive into these mind boggling homes. It's like being a detective, uncovering the secrets behind their extraordinary architecture and the intriguing backgrounds of the people who built them. There's even an episode on the Houdini estate. Mind? Blown. The estate is simply remarkable, especially the mesmerizing gardens. What's even more fascinating is learning that Houdini and his wife came up with a plan involving secret code words to try to contact him from beyond the grave. That is wild. If you're looking for inspiration, jaw-dropping visuals, and a whole lot of crazy history, then check out Home Lore on the Rocket Learn YouTube channel. Before you do anything else, go right now to the Rocket Learn YouTube channel, subscribe, and watch Home Lore. Now, on to this show. In this video. Does it hurt? Yes, it really hurts. Oh, there's one in the eye. You'll witness some of Southeast Asia's most dangerous dining deep in the countryside of Laos. Why am I doing this, dude? Um, to reconnect with your uh, motherland? But first, let's back up. Among this country's population, the Lao Laum, literally meaning lowland Lao, are the inhabitants of the river valleys and lowlands along the Mekong River. They make up 68% of this country. This here is a Lao Lam village. They're not connected to the electrical grid, they have little contact with the modern world, and for the most part, people live here as they did generations ago, sourcing most of their food from the river and land. These kids behind us are like swimming through the water trying to dart fish with their little harpoon guns. Today, Gia and I are here to see what it's like to live off the land. Oh, oh, darn! Even if it kills us. Oh, it's biting me! Ah, it's in the eye! From dangerous creature collection. I'm afraid that it's gonna fall in my mouth. To dining on critters that try to bite back. Bring out the live crab. And he throws it. Oh. <laughs> this extraordinary day of eating starts with breakfast. Good morning. Good morning. Right now we're just on the edge of a Lao Lum village. We're about to get breakfast, but we need to help collect a crucial ingredient. Why can't we get breakfast in the hotel? Well, this is a very unique breakfast. Today we're collecting an ingredient I'm pretty sure you've never tried before. Ant eggs. Uh, Soon we're gonna be making an ant egg omelet. Okay, I know the word omelet, I know the word eggs, but the ant is still kind of freaking me out. Right, so look up. Oh, oh, darn! Let me introduce you to Yia's early morning antagonist. These are weaver ants, a species that call Southeast Asia home. So here's what's really fun. I'm gonna need you to uh, collect the ant eggs. These ants are master builders with the super ability to construct intricate nests using leaves stitched together with silk produced by their larvae. Do they bite? 100% they bite. Uh, why am I doing this, dude? Um, to reconnect with your uh, motherland? There was a reason why you left the motherland too. <laughs> <laughs> This man is Fang Kang Kong, the village's premier hunter. He's brought Yia, his mighty ant-gathering weapon of choice, a basket on the end of a stick. You've got your tool. Take it away. So, up. Oh. Okay. I got it. All right. Okay, so good. He's elevating the bucket up to where the nest is. Now shake the basket to dislodge the eggs from their nest. Oh my god! Oh god, the eggs are spilling everywhere. This seems to be a straightforward task. Tap, tap away. However, the act of shaking dislodges more than just the eggs. Oh, it's biting me! Ah! It's in the eye! Oh my god! Oh no, man. Ah! 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 Connecting. Oh my gosh, dude. Keep it up, keep it up. The quicker you go, the faster you're done. Oh man, dude, this is kind of like invasive. Oh, there's one in the eye, in the eye. Oh. Oh, he's brought the nest down. Do you think there's enough in there for breakfast? Definitely. Cool, let's take a look. What? That's almost nothing. <laughs> That's it's good. I mean, this is a flavoring, right? I was expecting the thing to just be <laughs> overflowing. <like> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, hey. Oh, why are you bouncing around? I think this is a good start. Let him get a few more and then we'll tally the total amount of eggs we got at the end. As fierce as these ants are, they've been profoundly helpful to the humans who pester them over the centuries. They've been used in citrus farming to stave away harmful insects. They've been used as a medical treatment against arthritis. Most excitingly, they can be turned into a multitude of dishes, some of which we'll soon experience. Gentlemen. Well done. 
I think this is the toughest harvesting I've ever done. It's painful. And in the end, it's not like you shot a deer. I still feel the ants crawling all over me right now. Yeah, the heebie-jeebies. Now, some people do eat the ants. They're amazing. They taste sour. There's something I always say between like a lime and a green apple. I wonder if maybe we could just squeeze some ants. I did it. Oh yeah, it's like a citrus burst. Isn't that cool? The eggs are different though. The eggs are soon gonna go into a couple different dishes. I've never eaten them raw like this, okay. and evidently you can. Do you want to eat these with us? Oh yeah. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Not bad. The eggs, they pop slightly. You can feel the skin mm -hmm. on them as you chew them, but not a strong flavor. Good way to start the yeah. day, huh? Not bad. I mean, what would you rather have? A Red Bull or just like 20 ant bites? I would still take a Red Bull. To prepare these eggs for cooking, Mr. Fang delicately sifts the ant egg mixture with cassava flour to remove the ants. Once the perfect ratio has been achieved, cooking can begin. Chicken eggs are beaten with salt and that magical monosodium glutamate, also known as MSG. For fresh herbal notes, coriander and spring onion. Now the chicken eggs welcome the ant eggs. Let the egg sizzle and pop. And that is how you shovel down a 1,000 egg omelet. How do you deal with the pain? He just have uh, some more patience. Like, okay, ignore it and say, yeah, so that's fine. I think after a while, when I got bit, you came to a point where you're just like, whatever. Let's rewind to that point. <laughs> Oh, my crotch. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can see the ant eggs in there. Good large quantity. Oh, this looks good, though. All right, let's yeah, see. Sure. Hmm. It's like fried egg. Very oily. I feel some of the skins from those ant eggs, but I can't say that they have any type of a distinctive flavor that's been released by the heat. For you, do the eggs have any flavor? Kind of like creamy, and that's what he like about it. It's nice, that citrus in there. I really notice in a lot of cultures all around the world that the egg is used as a canvas that they add flavor into. Yeah, and just mix it with whatever comes from the environment. Our other dish right here is the soup. In a pot of water, add salt, MSG, crushed lemongrass, and ginger. Once the water is boiling, add locally plucked greens and green chilies. Now enrich the soup with loads of ant eggs. Add a touch of flavor with coriander and spring onion, then let the soup simmer. Whoa, this looks wild. It looks like little maggots. Creamy maggots. Tons of spices. So this is a load of warm, sweaty greens. Mm. Mm. The broth is super fresh. No real powerful flavors. It's all just kind of fresh and herbaceous tasting. Every couple bites, you chomp through some of these ant egg balloons and they pop out some creamy goodness. I get the flavors of the ginger, the lemongrass. But it's just so gentle compared to the food we've been having. I mean, we just had bad season with like garlic, chilies, lemongrass. This is just nice and gentle, subtle. So he said it's yummy because it has some natural sweetness in there. I thought I was going to be more grossed out by the eggs. I like it. It doesn't really taste me that it's there. If you didn't tell me that that was and eggs, you look at it and goes, oh, there's little soft rice kernels in there. Mm -hmm. One of the things that really influences the food available in Laos is the fact that this is a landlocked country. In fact, it's the only landlocked country in all of Southeast Asia. I'm curious, have you ever seen the ocean? No. Is that something you would ever hope to do? Yeah, he's very curious. Though it's completely separated from the sea, Laos is intricately tied to the Mekong River that flows through its core, serving as a vital lifeline. How much of the food that you eat are you going out and getting yourself? He have the different kinds of veggie, which is he going to the mountains and then correct them, like this kind of veggie as well. The river nourishes the land, ensuring fertile grounds for agriculture and a bounty of wildlife within. Nearby they have a river and that is full of different sea creatures and different plants that they can get. Today, I think we're really focused on the way you're able to live off the land. And we want to do our best. I mean, he helped with the ant eggs already. Yeah. Maybe I can help uh, collect, hunt, or gather something as well. I heard that there's a food we're going to be trying later today. When we eat it, it's still going to be alive, but first, we have to catch it. Okay, let's do this. In this village, the tradition of producing food from the river runs deep through generations. From a young age, children join their parents by the river to watch and learn how it's done. 
Maggie and I have both been tasked with collecting some freshwater protein for an upcoming meal. Check it out, Sonny and the girl squad. Yes? Yes. We are upriver from Sonny right now. He split us off and we're on the banks of this river and we're gonna be catching rice crabs. Now it's these little black crabs that kind of burrow themselves on the side of this river here in the mud. I'm catching this right here. I know what you're asking. What the heck is that? Well, inside of here, there are little baby shrimpies. The process for this began already 10 days ago. They put all these stakes in the ground. Inside, they put some rocks, leaves, branches, and then they put in buffalo bones. Oh man, shrimp love buffalo bones. It's their native food buffalo bones. Now my concern is this. I've been told that we have to be careful with leeches and maybe even snakes. The idea is that over 10 days, shrimp will come here, see the bones, lay eggs, and then they'll develop a big population, like a small to medium sized city. What they don't know is that we're about to wreak havoc on their city. I'm really nervous, but yesterday with the ants, he really helped me out, so. Should we see what happens? Let's do this. So he's going under the mud here. Then you can get it right on the bottom, scrape the bottom with that basket. For this, you have to have a really keen eye because the crab itself looks like all the debris. So it's like sifting for gold in here. The net is all the way down on the ground. I'm moving this way. She's telling me I need to get the net really low and the rocks and sticks have to be taken out. If the shrimp leave, if they get swept away, they're gonna go right into the net. He's going way into the roots, right into the ground here, because these crabs burrow themselves in real deep in there. So it's just not an easy, just scrape it along the banks, but you gotta go to the messiest, dirtiest, toughest spot. We are working hard, and I'm wondering if Sonny's doing really well and working hard in his section of the river. Oh man, what if we do this and there's no shrimp inside? I don't know the language they speak, but I know a lack of confidence when I hear it. I think they're saying, oh my God, there's no shrimp in here. Oh, is that shrimp? No, it's a fish. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> what he's doing here is he's just breaking away this bank and he's getting deep inside there. Let's see if I can do this. <laughs> this is no small task. Is this a shrimp? Oh, there's a shrimp. All right, look at this little river prawn right here. That's bigger than I thought it would be. Oh, I see movement. Oh, it's a little guy. Yeah. Oh my gosh. All this hard work bent over just for this meal, huh? Dude, calm down. Just in this little thicket of leaves and dirt, there is so much life. What's tough is it'd be easy to chuck something like this out and then you realize, oh wait, there's a little shrimp in there. Oh, I see another one. Oh, here we go. That's a couple of shrimp. Our guide here. Oh, there's a little shrimp. He's got another crab. He's so calm about it, you know? Well, check it out. So here, at the end of the day, you can see we have some little fish, we have shrimp, we have crabs all together in that trap. This is really ingenious. I've never seen anything like it. From here, I'm hoping you got some food too. Next, we're gonna be eating some of what's in here. With the crabs caught by Yia, we'll soon be treated to a death-defying meal, likely to give us shell shock. Um, this is too dangerous. But first, an equally spine-chilling appetizer featuring live shrimp. Is it vital that the shrimp be alive? When it's alive, it's more fun. When you put in the mouth, and then it's more like alive in your mouth as well. I thought she was gonna say fresh. She said it's more fun. Let's get to this recipe. Ma'am, take it away. So the shrimp have been washed already, and she's gonna dump them into the bowl here. First, we're gonna hit it with some lemongrass. Then we have red chilies, there's green chilies, cilantro and uh, green onions right in there. Then we got some toasted rice flour here. Toasted rice flour, you know, in Lao cooking is very common. This right here is MSG, and then salt. There we go. And she's about to squeeze some citrus on here with these limes. I love the way she's cutting the limes like that, because I'm gonna start doing that in my kitchen. <laughs> and then you have the badak. It's a fermented fish sauce, the real, real stuff. Now giving it a little bit of a mix, getting all that salt and all those delicious ingredients bound together. The smell is incredible. Mmm. Mm. I killed mine with my teeth, like when I was in prison. Oh yeah, you were in prison? Yeah, they had shrimp there. You went to a nice prison. Oh, there's some sharp bits, some soft, juicy bits. The thing is, I've had raw shrimp many times. It's delicious. And so the fact that it's raw isn't that strange. I guess it's more the fact that it's alive and it has like its antenna and legs and that horn shooting out from between its eyes. Texturally, those little crunchy bits, I like it. The flavors are great. I think that this taste is very natural. Do you like it? You seem like you don't like it. I have some more. No, I can't. I can't do me. 
Something going on here. This whole village is surrounded by two different rivers, and it seems like it brings so much life here. How important is the river to them for sourcing their food? Some kind of some lap, and uh, it's important because they can live without money. So mm -hmm. the way that they can go into the river, they can collect some food there, and they don't need to go to the market. There's just nothing really comparable in the U.S. If you're, unless you're talking about actual hunting. In America, doing this stuff is a sport. This is their survival, and it really connects them to the food, right? And think how much that limits waste. Really incredible. This is a snack, a little bit of an appetizer for what's coming next, because the animal that you caught the crab, yeah. soon we're gonna be eating it live. Preparations are underway for our final meal. If there's anything I've learned today, it's that this river has so much inside of it that you can actually eat, whether it's an animal or this. This is algae. Oh, it feels so weird. It is way more slimy than I thought. Take a look at that. So this has just been collected from the river. Villagers here harvest algae using crab nets, which collects into green slimy clumps throughout the river. They bring it here, they rinse it out a little bit, and soon that is going to be food. It looks like mermaid hair that's been rotting for a few days. It is unbelievably slimy. It has a unique texture. I'm told you could just eat it raw like this. You know, just because you can eat something doesn't mean you have to all the time. You just make a mental note, oh, I could eat that, and then move on with your day. All right, that's fascinating. So it kind of feels like hair in your mouth when you're eating it, and not a lot of flavor, but very slimy. She's gonna do some stuff to this to make it taste much more tasty. I can tell you that. Meanwhile, Mr. Fang is preparing fish from the very same life-giving river. These tilapia are cleaned, gutted, then skewered. In lieu of playing video games, these kids blend play with practicality, spearing fish that will feed the village. Oh, Not only can you get shrimp, but these kids behind us are like swimming through the water trying to dart fish with their little harpoon guns. They're like little Navy SEALs. They go under and then boom, they pop up and there's a fish on there. It's incredible. The fish will roast slowly over fiery cinders until they cook all the way through. I'm really amazed at the technique of grilling this fish. This is something that's so fun because it's so primal. I am feeling it. Oh, it's really hot, right? <laughs> Sometimes in the US, you just hear cooks complain about their grill and their fire saying, oh, you know, it doesn't work or, oh, the technology is not where we want it to be. But I'm sitting here where this is the technology, fire on the grill and then meat on a stick over it. I gotta say, this is quite the meal. Take a look. Of course, we have the fish caught yep. fresh from the river. We have this, this is algae. Then we have a salad here. We'll talk about that soon. I think we should start with the fish here, huh? Oh, you just peel it back, it flakes off. This fish here reminds me of some lake fish, like some crappy, sunny. All right, let's try it out. Mmm, -hmm. very nice. A delicate, flaky, white meat. Mm -hmm. It's a subtle fish flavor. And the skin tastes so good. It's like real fatty and smoky. It's simple, but delicious. What I really like about having that skin on the fish when while he was grilling it, that skin actually protects the fish meat so it doesn't dry out. This fish has a lot of little bones in it, so yeah. <laughs> oh, it was stuck in my retainer. Next, we have this right here, the algae. Though this food source is known to be incredibly nutritious, I should mention again that it's very slimy. So here's how you get the most out of your algae harvest. Prepare a flavorful seasoning by combining chili, garlic, onion, salt, and MSG, then grinding them into a harmonious blend. Cut the algae into a hot pan, then cook it until it reaches the desired gushiness. Once gushy, toss it in with the seasonings. Ground sesame seeds, fish sauce, coriander, spring onion, and local eggplant. Mix thoroughly and serve. Now, I don't know if you slurp it. I don't know if you... I guess you maybe you could scoop it. It is gloopy. Oh, bro, I don't know how I can do that, man. Mm. <laughs> it's still really slimy. It is full of spices. They've given life to it, but the texture is largely the same, or maybe they made it even more goopy, I think. Texture-wise, it's like somebody already chewed spinach, and you're now eating their spinach that they already chewed. Mama Bird just gave me a bite of some greens. Then you chew it, then it seems like there's some sand in there. I do feel that grittiness. It's interesting. The taste is nice. It does have a little bit of a spinach taste to it. Think about the nutritional value of it. It's that power green, you know? Superfood. With you able to go out and retrieve so much food from the area around 
around you. What percentage of the food you're eating would you say comes from the land and what percent comes from the market? 80% that's from nature. If it's not necessary, he's not gonna buy from the market. Well, there is one food you can't get from the market. Garlic, toasted chili, MSG, salt, sugar, fermented fish sauce, lime, cherry tomato, and eggplant are combined into a tantalizing blend. Once mixed, the shredded papaya joins to absorb the flavors. As for the crabs, they're served as is, alive and ready to attack as ever. The fruits of your labor today, Yia Vang. Oh, I thought we were gonna cook these. Yeah, they look a bit underdone, huh? Here's how it works. First of all, there's a papaya salad here. That is the base. And then I'm told you somehow combine a live crab with the salad with your mouth. <laughs> He's got a nice sized crab. He breaks off the biters, the claws. Then the tip of each leg is ripped off. Things still moving, dude, that's awesome. I'm so ready to get revenge on these guys. So then he grabs no some papaya pinch. and he throws it. Oh! <laughs> dude, I'm down, let's roll. Let's go, you little mother. Mom told me never play with your food, but I'm down to this. Ready? Oh, it's delicious. Is it tough? No, it's like eating a crunchy shit. Are you being serious right now? Oh, that is, look no. at this. This is no joke, man. Look at those claws. Oh gosh, yeah, that's a, <laughs> it's a big claw. Sorry. I'm gonna hit it with some papaya. Oh. Sounds like a good potato chip. Mm. Kill bite. It's a little like fingernails. There's a little bit of a swampy taste to it. Like if you're doing an oyster. That's what I thought. I agree with that. Cool, well, I guess end of the episode. That was awesome. No, I wanna eat a small one. I wanna eat the pinchers. Have you ever eaten it with the claws on? All right, that's what I'm doing. I want the full experience. I am still taking off the toenails though. Get a little papaya on there. Pinchers and everything. Yeah, here we go. Here we go, buddy. Try it. They try to run after the first bite. I said, I saw them moving in your mouth. <laughs> it's really crunchy. The papaya salad, meanwhile, is delicious. Very tasty. This has got to be one of the most unique village foods I've ever seen in my life. It's adventurous. It has like a hint of danger. The taste isn't bad. I would say I like the medium to smaller ones more. It's a little bit more balanced flavor. The big ones pack a big seafoody, rivery punch. We've seen so many different new foods here today, and I'm really blown away by how much of the natural gifts of the land here they're able to utilize. For you, growing up with all these stories of Laos, and then coming here and seeing some of this in person, what impact does this have on you? So the last few days of being here in Laos, especially in Northern Laos, has been so eye-opening for me. I've always heard these stories about how my mom and dad, they used the land, how the land fed them, and literally, I've been experiencing that. And now I've truly seen it, and I truly understand that ecosystem where we come from, you could be in Minnesota, you could be in New York, you could be in Arizona, and your diet could be 100% exactly the same. It wouldn't be dependent at all on your geography. That's what's so interesting is just seeing somebody whose life is so married to the land. I think that that's what's amazing about the people of Laos, is that if you did take them and put them in a different region, they will figure it out. Yeah. Just that tenacity, regardless of where they are, they will figure out how to use that land. And you know, even to understand that you can do that with algae. Somebody had to try it, or even to say, hey, to do this with these crabs and to eat it this way. Somebody had to do that, but eventually people figure out, and that's what I love about this land. Elevate your style with our brand new clothing collection. Rock out in our threads, feel the thrill of culinary adventures, and celebrate with us in style. Head on over to Beffers.shop today. Sonny, when we're done, I'm gonna need like a bath from you. Sure, I'll give you a bath. This is not a trap. It's like to catch a predator at any time. They're free to leave, but they might just be walking in to this net. You know, cooking it is also a fantastic option. I didn't even think of that till now. It looks like mermaid hair. Today on CSI Ocean Edition, uncovering the case of the dead mermaid. Well, there is one food that you certainly cannot get from the market. Do you know what that is? Say no. no. Bring out... <laughs> Why, that was perfect. I enjoyed that. Kai, come on. Bring out the live crabs. Boom, guys, that is the end of video number three, and I wanna let you know no animals were harmed during the filming of today's video. But, 
Otherwise, I want to say a huge thank you to my man, Chef Ye Bang, right here. Bang up job. My god, this guy's collecting ants, he's collecting uh, crabs. Like the animal crabs. Let's be very clear on that. You can check out Ye Bang right here on his social media. That's his Instagram. Go plug it in, give him a follow, and follow his fun culinary adventures online on the internet. Otherwise, guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Peace. Peace. Oh, good Shoot. harmony.